Um, so one of the things that we are really excited about today is we're going to be sharing, like, like we said, today is all about those stories. So we call it the heart of connecting. Um, and the heart of connecting is really through, through stories. And we're going to cover three different aspects. So the first one is just like stories of everybody. We think everybody's normal until we get to know them. And then we find that, hey, we're weird too. And so like, I'm weird too. We'll be like, what weird, these, how these weird stories, they help us relate with each other. Uh, we'll also be talking about number two, which is connecting with technology, uh, overcoming barriers to engaging. Um, sometimes this is a, a good indication of what is important to them. And then we'll learn about like behind the, what's behind all the behaviors that we see. You know, how do we get to that story? Um, and how do we know the story behind what, might be causing those uh, behaviors. So uh, without further ado, I'd love to get us started with kind of an interesting story. Like we, before we had talked um, a little bit about this notion of, man, I can't share these things. Like they're so weird. People see them. And I mean, like, you, you're like we, we can't connect like that. Come on. Um, maybe you can tell us about like your own kind of like this, there's this feeling of awkwardness, you know, when you, when you share your story, uh, Rochelle, like, uh, yeah, let us know. Yeah. So uh, it, it's funny because I've had a lot of conversations with other educators or even students sometimes too. And I think that's where it stemmed from years ago. I mean, when I was a kid, of course, there were kids that would say, oh, you're weird or that's weird or, or something. And it made you feel really bad, right? Because you're just like, oh, because weird is bad. And I think for a long time, everybody has this idea that if something is weird, that equates it with being bad. And I, I didn't think about it for a long time until being in my classroom and noticing my students saying things like, oh, so-and-so is weird or that's weird or and I said everything's weird everybody's weird There's something weird about every single thing that's out there and that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing I said I'm weird I do different things I have different interests than you that's what makes each of us unique and uh, that's just on the student side now I've had other educators friends colleagues from my PLN, who have said different things at times too, where they say, oh yeah, my students think I'm weird or my family, whoever thinks that I'm weird uh, or they refer to somebody as being weird. And I said, well, that's, that's okay because that just, it's something different or unique that makes us us. It's, it's our authentic selves. And the time, there was one time that, and I don't know, I can't recall if I had told you this or not, but it was about a year and a half ago. And I had a colleague from my PLN reach out and just said, you know, I don't think that I'm cut out for teaching. I just, I love what I do. I get excited to go to school every single day, but I feel like I'm just too different. I'm just weird. I don't fit in. Mm. And I, I felt so bad. I said, well, you know, and we talked about it a little bit and uh, through Voxer actually, because Voxer is okay. great for those conversations whenever nobody, you know, your, your schedule isn't in sync. And I said, I asked a lot of questions and I said, first of all, thank you for confining in me. And I said, what you're feeling, everybody else has felt at some point. I said, I felt the same thing two years ago. I said, the difference was I didn't tell anybody about it. I just kept it to myself. Like I was having challenges or I felt like I didn't fit in or anything. And that didn't do me any good. Now, of course, it's easy to look back and say, geez, I wish I would have said that to somebody. I said, but just the simple fact that you're telling me, it's okay. I said, because what I'm hearing from you is not that you don't like teaching. You, you don't. It's not that you're having challenges with behaviors or balancing all the tasks or anything. I said, you're just feeling that about yourself. I said, so what is making you feel that way? And she had some different examples of things. And I was like, I get that all the time. Like, that's a normal thing. Now, this person was newer to being in education. They had had a prior job before teaching. And so it's a, it's a different experience. So you might have 10 years where you've been working in the business world and your personality doesn't really change at all. And then you come into the classroom and you're still you, your genuine, authentic self, but it's just a shift a little bit. And so you know, we had a really good conversation. I had actually reached out to Dave Burgess uh, at the time. And I said, Hey, you know, I would really love to get a copy of Teach Like a Pirate for my friend because she's really struggling right now. And you know, could you could I get that if you would sign it? And he did and he sent it to her. And, and it was just it made a huge difference. And after, I guess, maybe part of our conversation, and then reading the book, like that helped, but it only I mean, the only reason that it helped is it came down to 
she shared the story with me and she felt comfort in sharing that story. So you have to have two pieces. One, you have to have that courage to kind of say to somebody and show vulnerability and say, all right, this is what I'm experiencing. And then you also have to have somebody that you trust and that you have a relationship with that you feel okay enough to do and reach out and, uh, and confide that in them. And so luckily for her and luckily for me too, because I learned just listening to those stories and wanting to help somebody because I've been there. I mean, we've all been there. And going back to the weird thing, I mean, how many times anybody who's in education, you've heard your students in your classroom calling each other weird or whatever. And I just, I jump right in. I just say, I'm weird. I, I do these things. And it, it helps you feel a little bit more normal sometimes too, to realize like, oh yeah, other people do that or other people think that way or experience that. And we don't get to that point unless we're sharing those stories and experiences anyway. So I love that. Like, I feel like, um, it, like a lot of people don't think it's okay. They don't think it's okay to share what we're struggling with. And being able to start by saying, yeah, I'm weird too, is just a way of making it normal for others. <laughs> right. I totally um, agree. That, that's so such an important message that, you know, we are in this world where everything, like it's obsessed with perfection. And, you know, suddenly you think like, oh, like I, I'm going to share something that's not perfection and people are not going to be okay with it. Like they're going to think that it's weird, but it's actually the opposite. Like it's actually the perfection that pushes you you away from other people. And it was the, uh, the connection with other people and you sharing your struggles that made it feel like, oh, this person's actually authentic. Like this yeah. person I can connect with. This person, they, they know my struggle. And that's the mm -hmm. thing is like people don't, don't really they're not really that concerned about how well like things are going for you. They, they actually want to relate to themselves, right? Of what it is that they're going through as well. And uh, when we share those struggles, we are doing exactly, exactly that. So right. um, that that's really helpful, but it, it kind of makes me um, curious about what, so when we look at those, those anxieties, those fears, those struggles, right? Like, what are we, what are we saying to ourselves? Like, are we, is there certain kind of messages that hold us back from sharing stories? Like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, what, what can we do to get over those barriers? Yeah, I think, I think there's, there's definitely something that holds us back. And I don't know if it's just prior experiences that, that we had, whether it was a personal experience or something that we observed, and you just kind of feel like, yeah, that's going to happen to me, or I'm going to get this response that that holds us back from it. And it's, and it's that it's the whole idea of vulnerability, too, because you put yourself out there, and you don't know how somebody's going to respond to whatever it is that you say, or an action that you take. And I think it's just, you really open yourself up. And I think for a lot of people, myself included, for a long time, it was just, okay, I'm having these challenges, or I'm not really sure what to do. And I, I feel like I'm better off just staying in my own space and not involving anybody else in it and working out on my own, because I don't know how they're going to respond to that. And that's not really, it's easier to say now than it was to realize back then. But that is not something that as an educator that we need to do, we need to embrace like, taking those risks and asking for help, because just even in our classrooms, we see all the time, students, and that was a kind of a wake up call for me too, is that students would say, I don't want to answer, I'm going to get it wrong, or somebody's going to laugh at me. And there are all of these different reasons why they didn't want to respond or participate in class. And for a while, I could see that look on their face, because I'd experienced that same feeling where I'm just like, oh, you know, the nerves take over. And I, you know, if I say something, and it's wrong, I'm going to be embarrassed, or people might laugh at me or whatever any of those things could be. And so I would kind of back off a little bit. But then after my own experiences of being in those uncomfortable positions, I was better prepared to kind of work with students to say, hey, you know what, do you not have any idea how many mistakes I make every single day? Like, there is learning in mistakes. And it's okay. I mean, laugh at yourself, whatever, you know, we're all in this in this whole ongoing journey of learning here. So just have to go with it. And I said, if you're wrong, so what? I, I said, do you think I, I never make mistakes? In, and I'll name a couple of things. And 
I think the perceptions from students looking at teachers is that educators don't make mistakes, but we do. We do. We're human. We make a lot of mistakes. And oh, I love the, this best, so much. the best thing we could do is to just like model that, share that and, you know, embrace it. But, um, it takes time and it's not something, you know, people can look at other educators or anybody in any profession and see, you know, how they are on a daily basis. Like, oh, they have this job or they've accomplished this thing or they just won this award or they've gotten this recognition. But you don't always know the story behind it. You don't know what the struggles that were involved. You don't know how long it took. You don't know. And there's so much that you don't know. You the, just the tip see. of the iceberg is yes, all we're seeing, right? <laughs> it's the iceberg. I was thinking the iceberg image, and that is so often shared. And it's true. Like you don't know about all of that. And so sometimes you see that somebody had these great successes and you don't realize that it took them 9,000 tries to get to that one point. All you see is that one point exactly. until oh, those I love this people so much, share Michelle. that. <laughs> You know, uh, to me, uh, it reminds me of when I was just talking about um, tech with with other educators as well. And the same thing applies for parents as well. There's this feeling that they got to know everything, right? Because like they, they've gone from being these experts of pedagogy, experts in teaching and the material and the content um, to learners of the technology, right? Like it, it's like such a humbling thing when it comes to like, oh, how do I how do I do um you know, this thing with technology that I don't really understand. And so, and in, it's often the case that maybe some of the students in your own class or maybe your own kids like know, know it better than you do. And you feel like, oh my gosh, I'm so out of place right now. Like, how could I ask anybody about questions about computer stuff? Like, I would see so, seem so dumb. I can't do this right now. But it's also like, um, it, it wasn't helping to connect with other people. Just the fact that you had a lot of knowledge didn't mean that they were going to gain that knowledge. Um, or that they would be motivated to gain that knowledge. And then in the same way, it's like when you did the opposite and you said, like, I, I don't actually know all this stuff either. Like, you know, I, I don't want to go claim that, like, I'm the world expert on something like AI. I want to say that I'm learning with you guys as well, because it's in those struggles, like things that I don't know uh, that I'm learning that I want to share with you that becomes way more authentic. So I love that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we've got a lot of uh, stuff in the chat uh, from I George. Know. He says, thank you. That. So love it. Um, he also asks, uh, people do not realize all the failures and years before uh, someone sees success. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think that <laughs> everybody, it, it seems like everybody seems like the overnight success, right? Um, I wish. And, but it's never, it's never overnight, right? There's always that, there's always that kind of moving from there. <laughs> um, he says, "Ah, so that's that's what I love about your body of work. Uh, it's ever evolving, and it's so impactful to our profession. Great job! <laughs> Thanks, George. 